Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be setting up the Battle XP G350. Now just quickly on why we're doing this, you might have gotten one without an SD card. You might have gotten one with an SD card that failed instantly. You might have gotten one and you heard that the SD cards are not very good and you should replace them right away. Variety of different reasons as to why you would need today's guide. If after watching the guide, it looks a little bit too complicated for you. You can avoid it. You can just play your device as normal until things break and then come back, but it's not necessary to do today's guide. But if you want the best experience, then that is what today is for. It's to help prevent future issues rather than confuse you right off the bat. So today, what we're going to be doing is installing ArcOS onto this device, which is different than the software that it comes with. It is a better software. We're gonna make use of that second SD card slot in case you bought one that didn't have the second SD card slot. And I'm just gonna show you how to actually format, set up the entire device, add ROMs, add BIOS, add all of those things. So you're a little bit more comfortable with using this device. So there's gonna be a few things that you need before starting. The first is a 32 gigabyte or 64 gigabyte SD card for the operating system. Also, you'll need a 128 gigabyte or larger SD card for the second slot, which is gonna have all of your games. It's gonna house most of the data. But if you prefer to do one SD card for today, then I would suggest a 128 or 256 gigabyte, and you can do that, just one slot if you want. You're also gonna need an SD card reader to connect the SD card to your PC. And then optionally, since this device does not have Wi-Fi, you can buy a Wi-Fi adapter and connect it to a USB-C adapter to get Wi-Fi if you need it. This is gonna be optional. Most of it is gonna be in my written guide and not in today's video, but I did wanna mention it. Lastly, you're going to need a ROM and BIOS library. Now, there is a major issue with the games that are included with these devices. They have a lot of problems. Pokemon especially will have trouble saving. You see it in Pokemon Emerald a lot, Fire Red, and so on. And you've probably seen it across social media. You see somebody who has a picture of Pokemon not saving, and they're like, my Pokemon doesn't save. Well, that's because you're using the ROMs that came with the device. So I would suggest grabbing your own games and BIOS files and not using what this device comes with. You are absolutely free to ignore this device if you want, but don't complain if your games don't work. The Tiny Best Set is a nice collection of games that you can grab. And if you're using a 128 gigabyte SD card, like I suggested, you can grab the file names on screen from that page, unzip them all in the same spot, and you're gonna have everything that you need from a ROMs and BIOS files perspective. It'll all be there. And then if you need any more, I have a whole video dedicated to the topic of ROMs and BIOS files. So there should be no complaints about not knowing where to find ROMs and BIOS. I just gave you all the information you need. Okay, and so we're all set. There are just two pieces of software that we need. Everything that I've talked about and will talk about will be in the description if you need it. The first is 7-Zip, and that'll help us extract the ArcOS image. So head to the 7-Zip website, download the first option, and install it. Next, we need Rufus, which lets us flash ArcOS to the SD card. So go to the Rufus website, and you can download the portable option. Next up, let's head to the ArcOS website. And you can scroll all the way down and you want to grab the image labeled RG351MP. You can use either the G drive or the mega links to do it. Now, if you're choosing G drive, make sure that you are logged in with your Google account to download it, or you might run into an issue. Go ahead and use 7-Zip to extract the image from that file that we downloaded from ArcOS's website. You're also going to need a special DTB file, and you can grab that from the description. And it is called RK3326 RG351MP Linux DTB file. Go ahead and connect your SD card to the PC using an SD card reader. For those of you that will be doing two SD cards, this is for the operating system card. Open up Rufus and make sure that the device listed is the SD card that you connected. It should match the drive size. On the right, click select and navigate to the folder that you extracted that ArcOS image and select the image that you extracted. Leave everything else as default and click start. Click yes to any pop-ups. 
go check on some loved ones, this is going to take some time. From here on out, after the image is put on the SD card, you might get pop-ups in Windows that say the card is not formatted, or errors with partitions, or anything else like that. Ignore all of that. If you format the card after doing all of this, you kind of have to start from the beginning all over again. The errors are just Windows not knowing how to handle this specific file type, so don't worry about it. Once Rufus is done, you're going to need to move that special DTB file that you downloaded before onto the boot partition of the SD card that we just created. So you should see the boot drive in this PC, but if you don't see it, open Disk Management from the Windows search menu, find the boot volume, right click it, change drive letter and paths, and click add to give it a drive letter. Click OK and OK, and now you should see it in File Explorer. Then just move that DTB file into that drive. You can now safely eject the card using the taskbar, and then you want to put it into the slot labeled TF1 on your device while it's powered off. Then power on the device, and it's going to reboot twice. Don't touch anything, just let it do its thing. When you see the emulation station menu, that's when you know you're good and ready. Push start, go to quit, and then shut down system. Now we need to get our ROMs and BIOS files onto the device. If you are doing the one card method, you can skip this next part. I'm going to be showing how to set up two cards for this next little bit. So two card users, go ahead and connect your second SD card to your PC using the SD card reader. Open up Rufus and make sure that the device listed is your SD card that you connected. Again, it should match the drive size. Now under boot selection, change it to non-bootable. Then checking near the bottom, make sure that the file system is XFAT. Go ahead and click start and you might get some warnings about partitions and all of that. Just go ahead and click yes to all of them to get started. It should be fairly quick and it'll get your second SD card formatted as XFAT. When it's done, safely eject it and insert that card into slot TF2 and make sure that the OS card is in TF1 as well while the device is powered off. Turn the device on and when you get to the menu, head to the Options tab, then Advanced, and then click Switch to SD2 for ROMs. When that's done, we are all set and the folder structures have been set up for that second SD card. So go ahead and push start, go to quit, and then shut down system. Okay, and so now for both single and dual SD card users, connect your SD card back to your PC. For dual card users, you're gonna connect that second SD card to your PC. You should now see an easy ROMs partition in File Explorer. Head into that if you are doing the single SD card method. Otherwise, you're just gonna see ROM folders if this is your second SD card. And if you happen to not see any of this on either end, again, go into disk management and give the drive a letter so you can see it. Now it should be pretty self-explanatory at this part, I would hope, but these are platform folders where you can put your ROMs in, as well as a BIOS folder. So you're gonna see GB is Game Boy, GBA for Game Boy Advance, all that sort of thing. If you scroll down, these are all system folders and inside of the folders, are where you put your ROM files. Now, if you happen to grab that tiny best set that I suggested earlier, you're gonna notice that a lot of the folder names don't match up. So it might not be an equal one-to-one -one with, let's say Super Nintendo being SNES and tiny best set has it as SFC and that sort of thing. So you're gonna have to just move the files inside of the system folders to the right system folder on the SD card. So just go through, match up, GB is GB, GBA is GBA, that sort of thing. Don't forget to move over your BIOS files as well. You're gonna need those in the BIOS folder. Now, if you happen to get stuck, the ArcOS Wiki has an emulators page and it tells you what the system names are and their folders and all that. So it should be pretty easy for you to match up what goes where. Once you've moved all of that over, safely eject and put your SD card back into the powered off device. For dual card users, you will need the operating system card to be in slot TF1 to boot up properly. And your slot two is your games card. Turn on the device and you should see all of your games are set up and ready to go. You are fairly done at this point. 
but there's a few things that we can make changes with, and one of them is RetroArch hotkeys. So head to RetroArch from the main menu, and you're going to see two versions. You're going to have to repeat these steps for both of them, so just pick the first one to get started for now, then you can come back to the other one. Then you want to head to Settings, Input, Hotkeys. There are a few things that aren't on that should be, in my mind. First, let's set Hotkey Enable to the Menu button. Then, let's select Fast Forward Toggle and we're going to make it R2. Scroll down and head to Take Screenshot, push Y to remove the button mapping, and then continue down. Let's also set Show FPS to Y. This makes it so when we push Menu plus these hotkeys, it turns these functions on, since Menu is our hotkey button. Back out one menu and we're going to turn off Confirm Quit. So you don't have to do Start plus Menu twice to exit games. Back out twice to get to the main RetroArch menu, and then Configuration and Save Current Configuration. Quit RetroArch and then repeat all of these same steps for the other RetroArch version. Now I mentioned earlier about Wi-Fi. Again, this device doesn't have Wi-Fi and it's kind of a negative here because you can't update ArcOS, you can't update your artwork or even add artwork easily. You have to do a whole bunch of other ways to do it. You can't do retro achievements, you can't transfer while files over wirelessly, all that sort of thing. So it's a bit of a negative. However, you can buy the Wi-Fi adapter with a USB-C adapter and get that done. I have all of those instructions on my website, so you can follow that if that's something you want to do. I left it out of the video because probably not going to affect a lot of people and it's actually very simple to do. So check out the description. I have those instructions on the website if you do want to add Wi-Fi to this device. Otherwise, enjoy your games and have fun. All you have to do is click a game and start playing. Start plus menu button is the way to exit the game. Otherwise, make sure you're saving and having fun. That's it. You're done. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds like this one. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.